I heard people t- talking about how when when somebody is have has adopted this lifestyle that people kind of question them, why are you doing that? You know, and and making them feel like they shouldn't be doing it. And then when they get to the place where they have a noticeable change, maybe it might be in their health or and or it could be in their waistline, then people are just going up to that same person and saying, how'd you do it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they find out, it's amazing the responses they have. Oh no, I can't do without that. I can't do without that. I I always tell the story that someone in my family wanted to know, you know, how I lost all the weight. And when I explained, her response was, Well, you might as well just lie down and die. Oh God. seriously. And I said, Well, I'm not lying down and I'm not dying. <laughs> And so you move on to the next one. You know, don't waste your time on people who aren't open. Yes, I like that. You know, you have to spend the time on yourself instead of wasting your time on worrying about what they're thinking or saying. Yeah. I I mean, and I love all the lessons that you teach us, Esther. They're not just about adopting this lifestyle. People who are just looking to make changes in their life in general, make improvements, either by taking away things in their life, either things that are harming them, could be food, could be other addictive things, could be people, right? But And all of your, your the things that you talk about are always things that we can use in many areas of our life, not just about adopting the whole food plant-based lifestyle. I totally agree. I think truth is truth. And education is education, and it's just a different manifestation, just a different arena. But the same principles apply. If you don't love yourself enough to give yourself the best, like you said, whether it's relationships or whether it's food or whether it's what you read or what you watch on TV, whatever you take into your environment has an impact. Yeah, it really does. And you've been on the show quite a few times and I love, I, I just, it's an open invitation to have you come back because we all love you and we all benefit from having your kind, generous spirit here with us. Thank you. We've, in the past shows, we've talked about how, and maybe not everybody tuning in may not know that you did adopt this whole food plant place lifestyle and you had a great results. I'm going to pull up this, uh, photograph of your before and after so this way in case people haven't seen it and and that was this was a before actually it wasn't an after but we'll ha- we're going to get the after up soon but you want to just briefly talk about that and then we're going to get into our questions and things okay the reason why i like these two pictures so much is because that was what i looked like when i had my crisis that changed my life that was in may of 2016 And Ben and I were in Ireland uh, having a wonderful tour there. Uh, The one on the left was taken by the Titanic uh, Museum. And the one on the right was taken by a sheep farm that we visited. And that's just how big I was. I mean, I was a 3X. I weighed, well, I don't know what I weighed that day on that trip. But that summer, I weighed 257. I had been as high as 282 prior But during that trip to Ireland, uh, we had a wonderful Irish tour guide and we stayed friends with him. And he was so good about always finding a place for me to sit down and rest. And um, by the time that tour was over and Ben and I were at the airport walking to the gate, he kind of went ahead of me. He was a little more anxious. And so he went ahead and I, I almost... I almost just sat down there in the middle of that airport and thought, you know, I can't take one more step. I, my knees hurt, my feet hurt. I'm at the end of my rope. Well, you know, when you've got to go, you got to go. And I kept managing to move forward. And so that was, you know, I like to say in terms of spiritual things, that's when God brought me to my knees, literally. And sometimes it takes a crisis to wake us up. I don't know that everyone needs a crisis. But I know that crisis are times when we're either at the end of our rope or we're at a point where we're going to be open to listen to something else. So I came home from that trip wondering how in the world am I going to go to China in September feeling like I do. 
So like we all do, you make an appointment with your doctor, right? So I went to the doctor and he said, well, you can continue taking your pain medication or he said, I could give you knee injections or he said, I could refer you to orthopedics for a possible knee replacement. Well, I didn't like any of those and I didn't like it even more when he said, however, you'd have to lose 70 pounds first before I could send you to orthopedics. Well, that turned out to be a blessing in disguise because what if he had sent me right away to orthopedics? You see, that would have been a whole different outcome. So as it was, I couldn't go to orthopedics, but I've been on every diet that I've ever heard of, except for the tapeworm. I had never done that one. But I've been to Tops. I've been to Weight Watchers. I've been to Overeaters Anonymous. I'd, I even drank a liquid protein drink one time and tried to sell that. And so anyway, all these things, you know, and then the worst one was... Um, was the Dr. Atkins diet. I nearly died on that with pancreatitis and gallbladder. But anyway, so where's, where's a person, you know, what's a mother to do when, you're, when you don't have any more information? Well, when we're at the end of our rope and we ask for help, help will come. There are angels out there. And I have an angel in my life and she found a book that she said would help me. And I looked at it and it was Dr. McDougall's Max, uh, the McDougall program for maximum weight loss. And I had never heard of eating vegetables and fruits and grains and beans for a diet. And uh, she also told me, go to drmcdougall.com and look at some of his success stories. And right away, I discounted that. And I said, no, they're probably like these other movie stars that get on magazine covers and they're all photoshopped. So I wasn't open to listen to anybody's success story at this. But I was willing to treat it like a experiment because I like science. I like math. And I thought, I'm going to, what have I got to lose? Right. I'm, I'm going to put that. I called him a sucker at the time. I'm going to put that sucker to the test and I'm going to do this to the best of my ability. Cause that's the only way I will be able to prove if it works or not. If I played with it, that it wouldn't be a good experiment. So all of that to say, I put him to the test and I lost 80 pounds the first year. I did not have to have my knees replaced. I lost 25 the next year. I lost 25 the next year. And I have maintained that weight loss even as of today for four years. So it's a miracle. I mean, it is, it is the food we were intended to eat. It's, it's not an easy path, but life isn't easy. I mean, you can have your chest opened up. You could have your breast removed. You could have dialysis. You could have all these other things too. And, and, uh, still get to have your favorite food? Well, what kind of a choice is that? So anyway, I just, um, I just want to stand on the, pre on the corner, preach to everybody. There is relief. There is an answer out there. And um, so, you know, you know the rest of the story. Maybe you all have heard the rest before too, but I think that's basically what you wanted to bring you up to, up to snow. Yeah. Just in case anybody hasn't seen, see you or heard your story. And so, like I said in the beginning, so people will say, so how'd you do it? And how, and not just how'd you do it, but how'd you stick to it? Because you had this weight loss and there have been people that I've interviewed even that say, I am very good at dieting. I have done lots of diets and I have been very successful on all of them. But of course, I gained the weight back and many of them will say I gained more, even more weight back. So, so a lot of that the reason that we're having you here today is because people are going through those issues and challenges. And so I'm really excited to hear the tips that you're going to give people. But if anybody just has a general question for Esther, we, we can bring that up too, because we have a lot of fans there and people may just want to ask you a question. So what I wanted to do, Esther, is I wanted to begin our game of true or false. It's time for True or False on Be Green with Amy Live. Answer true or false to Amy's questions in the comments below, and Amy will ask our guest for the expert answer. Okay, so Green Warriors, get ready. Esther, here's the question, and I'm going to give, read it, and as they're typing in the answer, we'll have you give your answer. True or false, it is possible to learn from the mistakes of others. <laughs> Hmm. True or false? Okay, Green Warriors, type in what you think the answer is. And Esther, tell us what you say. <laughs> yes, I wish I could say it's easy to learn from others. Um, I think we're here 
on this planet in this lifetime to learn our own lessons. And I think when we have an open mind and when we're desperate, we will listen and be in a place to uh, perhaps make some changes. I, I almost think it takes a crisis on your own personal life to make the changes that are required happen. Uh, we all want the easy bullet. In fact, I just heard yesterday on TV, overheard, that there's some kind of a new pill out now. And, and people want the easy pill. We all want our cake and eat it too. We don't want to sacrifice. We don't want to pay the price. But in this case, what saved me and what could save anybody else is if you decide you're going to do, in my case, the McDougal Maximum Weight Loss Program, and nothing's going to stop you. Now, that's not to say that there won't be little times when you might have some errors and be seduced back into eating. But if your intention can be that you're going to follow that and give it, like say, 21 days or a month to establish new habits and do your best not to vary at all during that time so your taste buds have a ch chance to change and adapt to the new food, then you'll be craving the new food. But you have to be... It's, Think of it as drug addiction. Think of it as alcohol addiction. Think of it as cigarettes. You don't diet all week and then go off on the weekends. It has to be consistent. It has to be thorough. It has to be clean. It has to be severely and radically changed. You have to think of yourself as being almost like in a jail. You know, where for this next period of time, you're not going to have what you're addicted to. If you can't give it up, then face it, you're addicted. That there you go. That's a good T-shirt or a bumper sticker. <laughs> if yeah. you can't give it up and face it, you're dead. And and that's that's very true it's for a lot of things in life. Yeah. I love we, that. Yeah, we don't often want to hear that because addiction has such a moral implication to it. Like, oh no, I'm not addicted. I just like sugar, or I just like fat, or I like salt, or whatever. Or I like my meat, or whatever it is. Of course you do. You've been trained on it. You've been, the culture has promoted that. Your doctors promote that. And it's the normal way to eat until we learn better. So I hope that gives people hope. And I, I sometimes have said to somebody, do you want me to pray something bad happening to you so you'd be willing to make a change? Well, no, we don't have to do that. We, we have good minds and our minds can decide what we want. But you have to want health more than you want what you're addicted to. Mm. And you can't play the game both ways. You can't have two masters. Either you're going to serve the wolf or you're going to serve the angel. You know what I mean? And so every bite leads to either disease or health. Every bite. And so a little dab will do you. Yeah, a little dab will do you in. Because that's just enough to get your brain going and wanting more and more. And there's never enough. Yeah, and these are wonderful things that you have learned along the way because you had those those two battling things on your shoulders, you yes. know, for, for quite a while, and you gave in to to the slave for, for many many occasions. Yeah, I've heard that's what uh, that's the definition of an addict is a slave. So, what are you a slave to? You know, I will say another thing that really helped me because I live in a mixed marriage. My husband said, oh, I could never eat like you. So then what do you do? Well, fortunately for me, I had it easier. I didn't have any children at home that I could blame. I didn't have any siblings in the house that I could blame. You know, I had nobody else as an excuse for not being able to do it. So I had it easy in that respect. But still, all it takes is having something in your house that's non-compliant. And most likely, if it's there, you're going to eventually go to it because we are by nature drawn to the most calorie-dense food in our environment. It's just normal. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean you don't have willpower. It means that that's just the normal thing we go to for survival. But the things we have in our kitchen aren't normal things for our survival. They're highly addicted. And so it's not fair to say, you know, that you're weak or something because you're putting an accelerated temptation in your pathway. So given all of that, what I did say to Ben, I asked for help and I said, would you be willing not to bring any sweets into the house? 
So at that point, he was free to eat whatever he wanted to eat. But I just didn't want the temptation brought into our kitchen. So if he, if he got some treats that were you know, kind of healthy even, I just didn't even want to see them. So, so ask for help. And if somebody's not willing to help you, I'd say question their love for you. Yes. Yes. That's right. I mean, they may not want to do what you're doing, but they should at least be willing to support a choice that you're making as long as it's something that's positive like that. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Okay, well, we have another question, and that is, true or false, we need a crisis to make a decision towards eating a whole food plant-based diet. Oh, here we are talking about a crisis. I don't know if you want to talk about crisis, but <laughs> <laughs> true or false, yes. true warriors. <laughs> Type in your answer. Nestor, what do you have to say about that? Well, a crisis is the best motivator because until we have a crisis, we can play the game, right? We'll put up with things, we'll put up the things uh, and, and you know, that's our nature. We'll, we, want our, we want it both ways. But if we have a crisis, like, I think it's wonderful. I know this lady named Maureen and she's a nurse. And fortunately she's in a position in the hospital that when a patient comes in with a heart attack or diabetes, uh, and is facing kidney disease. She's in a wonderful hospital where they will, um, the, the staff, that. the staff, happened. something happened. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, she's in a wonderful place where the staff at the hospital will refer those patients who are in crisis to her so she can tell them about a plant-based diet. Because when we're in a crisis, we're probably the most open to hear a new message. Otherwise, we just kind of want to go on our merry way. So does it take a crisis? Well, it did for me because my crisis wasn't my health. It wasn't the fact that I was morbidly obese. It wasn't the fact that I had all these diseases going on. My crisis was the threat that made me my traveling days were over. Yeah. See, who who would think that that would be your why, you know? And, and so everybody has their whys, whether it's about their, you know, grandchildren or in your case, you know, you're traveling, that that was something that meant a lot to you. And, uh, and fortunately, uh, Ben was a travel partner with you, as, as, you know, and he enjoyed the traveling as well. So hopefully that w may have been something that have, would have helped him as well too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so a crisis can be used to your advantage, put it that way. And if you don't have a crisis and you're really smart and you're educated and you finally said, say like Ben did, this makes sense for him. It was the environment and it was the animals and it was all the things associated with that. Plus seeing my success. And he said in an interview the other day, well, she was getting skinny and I didn't want to be the only fat one. <laughs> you know, and that's the first time he admitted that. So I love that because someone during that time, I remember someone saying, Hey, you know, you better watch out. She's looking pretty good. <laughs> and, you know? And so, you know, then there was a disparity between the two of us. Cause as long as we were both fat, it didn't matter. Mm. We were just a fat team and we were happy and we were enjoying our life. But yeah, I, I didn't mind being the last to finish a hike. I didn't mind being the last to get on the bus when we traveled but I wanted to be on the bus. I wanted to go. And, and in, Jan, in December, January of this year, we, after COVID was all over and all that, we got to go to um, South America and Antarctica, which was our last continent to visit. So it was, it was wonderful. We had a wonderful cruise. So my traveling days are not over and I can go wherever I want, whenever I want. And you know, you just make the food work. You can, you know, it's not always perfect, but you just do the best you can. And, and uh, so if you're smart enough to make a change without a crisis, I give you, I give you a lot of credit. Wonderful. Okay. So we have another one. Oh, this is a good one. True or false, Green Warriors. What do you think? Willpower can be taught. True or false. Okay, Esther. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's false. I, what, what gave me willpower was success. When I followed that program as well as I did, my success was so fast 
that that became my motivator, not only to exercise willpower in difficult situations, but to keep motivated and going in. So when we get to the point where we can have our motivation come from within, not somebody saying, okay, when you lose 50 pounds, I'll take you to Hawaii. Or when you lose 50 pounds, you'll look better at your son's wedding. Or if you lose 50 pounds, you'll like yourself better. Or if you lose 150 pounds, you won't have to go to Lane Bryant anymore. All those things are external. And we, as humans, as spiritual beings, we need to tap into what we want for our life's journey within us. And uh, willpower is something we exercise when we can get our brain engaged. But you can't get your brain engaged when you're still eating all the junk food because mm. your brain doesn't work right. So the cleaner you get, the better your brain works. And the easier the willpower is because you realize that that's taking you down a slippery slope and you don't want to repeat that lesson over and over again. I mean, who wants to stay in sixth grade for 10 years? That's true. <laughs> I don't. No, I don't either. And, and it, you know, and willpower, it's, it's such a, such a weird term because like you were saying earlier, a lot of this food, I mean, if you even want to call it food, it is just so have the sugar and the oil and the salt and the chemicals in it that make it so addicting to our pr primitive brain. And, yeah. and for us to have it around us and think that we can just resist it in the beginning anyway, because now I could have it around me and, and I could resist it, but not in the beginning. <laughs> but to think that we could resist it and, and all it means, all we have to do is have willpower. Yeah. You know, that's well, not... You know what? I love to, I love to play with words. Uh -huh. Let's take that let's take that willpower apart and say I have will power. I have the power within me to will what I want in my life. I can make good choices. I will make better choices. I will be strong. I will be well. And then we can change that to I am strong. I am well. Isn't that fun? Oh, it is. It, it is. Definitely. I used to, whenever I would see the word willpower, I would think, who is this willpower guy? Yeah, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm curious about the Green Warriors that are watching and listening, if they can type in the comments things that uh, may make it difficult for them to stick with this plan or, or things that are making it difficult for them to decide to adopt a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And if you're not having challenges and you just came here to, because you love Esther like I do, <laughs> type in something that something encouraging to the other people that will be reading the comments about what you do in order to make this lifestyle work for you. Yes. Okay. And we'll let what I I would love for the green warriors to type those things in the comments while we go along. Should I move on to the next true or false, Esther? Sure. Okay. Sure. So the next one is, true or false, it is possible to eat healthy perfectly. Mm. Type in your answers, Green Warriors. Go ahead, Esther. What do you say? Well, what I'm thinking is that there's a bell curve, you know, in any uh, behaviors. You know, there's people that are on this side, and then there's an average that come up here, and then the people that are at the stream. Well, we're not trying to do things perfectly because we're still human. We can aim for perfection. We can aim for being, uh, what's, somebody used the word, being, um, well, effective, you know, and we can do the best we can, not making excuses for ourselves, but who's perfect? I mean, perfect is a judgment call, and who's the judge? And so is it important to eat perfect? No, but, you know, you can do, I, I think Chef AJ uses the word compliant, rather than thinking about doing something perfectly. We can be outstanding. You know, an A minus is still a good grade. Mm -hmm. And we're our own worst enemy. So many times people say, oh, I ate this today and I ate this and I ate this. Why are they counting up their errors and in thinking? Instead, why don't we make a list of everything we do right in a day? And so I say to people, why don't you make a I did list instead of I should do list? Mm -hmm. And every time you do something that's, positive and moving you closer and closer to your goal, you know, be proud of yourself and pat yourself on the back. It's not a vanity pride. 
It's just acknowledging that in that instant you made a really good choice. And, and what we magnify or what we think about, we can magnify and what we give power to. And so I've learned a lot from that Louise Hay, too, where she has such positive affirmations. And those are important because it's so easy for us to be critical of ourselves. And the minute somebody gives us a compliment, we say, oh, no, if you only knew me, you'd really know what I'm like. Or, oh, if you only knew how many times I screwed up or, you know, I mean, we're so quick. So why don't we just acknowledge our good points as many times as we're tempted to criticize ourselves. Build yourself up and know that you can do what you choose to do. You have the power and you can do it. And it's all within. And so don't worry about perfection because what's perfect for me would not be perfect for Ben. So who's going to say what's perfect? So eat healthy. And just when you look at something, take a moment to look at it and say, does this lead towards health? Or does this lead toward disease? And what do I want most in my life? If you want the disease most in your life, go for it and have a good life. Mm, that is just so well said. I'm going to look and see at some of the comments that we have because the Green Warriors are enjoying what you're saying. Oh, Steve said, I believe we all have challenges, but it is just my time to dive deeply. Everybody, let's give encouragement to Steve for yeah. saying that in the comments. And we are encouraging you and come back and watch this replay when, when you need a little boost from Esther. <laughs> I'm so glad that he, he put that out to the universe. Yes. That's wonderful. And guess, and guess what? If plans materialize, I'm going to get to meet him in September. Is that right? That's right. Oh, see I that? See. <laughs> That is wonderful. I love he, that. <laughs> he, lives, he lives in Omaha, Nebraska, and Ben and I are scheduled to go there and give our story in September at wonderful. a health, health conference. So I'll get to meet Steve, hopefully. Excellent. Excellent. Stephanie said, when I have a slip up, I try at the next meal. That's right. And a really good thing is when you mess up, have your next bite be a potato. I like that. That's what helps me. Like I, I came back or if I go to a dinner or someplace, I come home, I'm just not satisfied. I don't have to search for something in the cupboard because there's going to be nothing in the cupboard that will satisfy me like a potato will. Just, you know, have your next bite be a potato and get back on track. Oh, I have to show you my shirt. Can you oh, see yes. what You always have beautiful shirts on. Oh, well, this one was given to me by Jane Kennedy and another woman who came from Tennessee or Kentucky or someplace to, to meet with us there on a tour. And I wondered, and I, I forgot what this means. Can you see the letters on it? I think D-S-M-B. Yeah, D-S-U-B. Right? Yeah, uh -huh. And I thought, what in the world does that mean? And I kind of forgot. And I had to go back to my text this morning to remember. It's don't screw up breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and then I, I don't know if I can show you, but I'll try and turn around on the back. Anyway, it says okay, something. I'm going to put you on full screen so that this way maybe we can uh, see if we can hang on a second. I'll get you on full screen in a second. Let's see. No, nope, that's not it either. I'm going to work on it, guys. Yeah. Hang I on. Here we go. Do it again. Do it again, Esther. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. All right. Stronger. Then your excuses. Be stronger than your excuses. I love it. That's that it great? right there. Isn't that great? And there's a potato. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, it's just, it's, so, it's such a good life. I tell you, people, I can't tell you. It's heaven on earth. When you get out of that purgatory of dieting and you get out of all that guilt and all that shame and all that, oh, my gosh, it, it's, it, it truly is. It, it's just revolutionary. It really is. And we just, and it, but it's difficult at the same time, you know. Yeah. Some other time, maybe I can talk with you, Amy, about our recent experience in the hospital. But, yes. you know, we'll save that. In the past. Yeah. We'll save that. So fresh. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it, 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 this community of plant based eaters, they're, they're intelligent. And they, they, a lot of them do a lot of research to, to find out what's going on, to figure it out. 
and they're just so welcoming and they have so many resources and, and really great advice, just like you do. And I think that that's the, the nice thing about this lifestyle, because you don't have to go to a meeting or something. You can just go, go online and you're going to see people that you can talk to, or you can watch uh, this broadcast or similar ones. And there's always people giving uplifting, encouraging messages and I love the fact that with this lifestyle, you're not just getting the weight loss if that's your goal, but you're also get, getting the health. And that's just so important. And I think that's what separates this lifestyle from the other diets that are out there because people are just, they're not necessarily getting healthy. They're, they're getting sicker, but, and maybe they might lose a little weight temporarily. Yeah. Yeah. Angela Fischetti said, uh, it's not necessary to add in a punitive component. It's hard enough for many without needing to chastise oneself for not being perfect. I agree with Esther. Very yeah. well said, Angela. Well, I think this way of eating, too, is the only one I know of that teaches kindness. Because when we get in touch, and it wasn't this way for me in the beginning, caring about the animals, but once I moved into, you know, selfish for myself because I wanted to travel. But once I learned more, I thought, you know, I think this is so important for the whole world to learn kindness. And when we don't take in animals, we don't take in their hormones, we don't take in their fear, we don't take in their suffering. You know, it's, it's um, well, it's just, it just leads to more peace. You know, and no animal has to die for me to live. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. it's that added component that you don't get in any other diet. You're right. You're right. And, and Steve made an edit here, so I'm just going to include his edit. He said, I keep eating the right way. I keep feeling amazing. Repeat. <laughs> I keep eating the right way. I keep feeling amazing. That is what I'm trying to do now. I love it. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. So well said. So well said. I love that. Okay. So we're going to have an, another <laughs> true or false. So let's see. We have, oh, here's one that's nice. True or false. Food can satisfy an internal need for love. Mm. That could be a whole book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Green Warriors, type in your guest. Esther, what do you have to say about that? Well, again, I think we all try to do that, whether we're under stress or we're feeling unworthy or we feel injured or we feel like a victim. You know, we certainly reach out for what we think is a safe drug, which is junk food, but it cannot take the place of love. It's, love is something that is given freely and we need to learn to love ourselves just as we are not when we lose 10 pounds not when we do this and that and the other we you know if we can get to the point where we say you know what this is just where i am this is just who i am this is just the body i have manifested it's not who i am mm. i am so much more than my physical appearance i am so much more than my education i am so much more than friends i have you know i am some would say divine um but you know that when you can really accept yourself where you are, then look at how much you can grow from that. But uh, for me, yes, if someone hurt my feelings or if I felt uh, like I'd worked so hard and I deserved to have a treat, you know, uh, it, can, it can satisfy you momentarily, just like a cigarette can satisfy your anxiety momentarily. But then an hour later, where are you? Yes, yes. I love it. I love it. This is, these are just, people are going to have so many pearls of wisdom from you to take away from, for today. It's just, these, these are things that we have to think about because there are, I, I, there's so much, I think a lot, maybe a lot of the people who become overweight have things that they are thinking about, about their self-worth. And then they get into these different diets and, you know, it's up and down and yo-yo and some success. And then two steps back and then more of that self-hate and I think that and there some of them are looking for that for that uh, love mm -hmm. from food and meanwhile it's really 
it's just a, a hit of some kind of a drug. Yeah. And that's and that and, and even yeah. if you're not looking for a drug, you get a dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. You know, so you might think you're loved like before. I mean, I felt loved and I had a wonderful relationship. It wasn't that, but it just tasted so good. And it just, you know, you want, I wanted more and more. It was never enough. So it's not only um, that you aren't being loved. You may very well feel loved, but there's some, something that's missing in your life. And one thing I suggest is get your mind off yourself and help somebody else. Hey, that's true. Right. If you can, if you can just do that. And part of it is by being a good example for other people too. That's one, another way that you can help people. Yes. Very nice. Okay, so we have a next, our next true or false. Okay, get ready, Green Warriors. True or false, guilt works when we miss our target. Ooh. <laughs> guilt works when we miss our target. What do you think, Green Warriors? Go ahead, Esther. <laughs> well, I think guilt is its own animal, you know, and uh, we certainly uh, do that. And I'll tell you how I have done it is I've overeaten and then I get on the scale and I let that be my judge and it tells me things I don't want to know and so then as a dieter I would think okay now I have to punish myself for my errors and I'm gonna have to starve myself to get my weight back down it was never about just resuming the program it was always about punishment so I think we live in a culture where punishment is not the answer I think love is the answer. And when we think we can punish ourselves, when is enough enough? You know, it's like, I don't believe in corporal punishment either. I mean, what does that teach children that when they're upset or nervous, they should hit somebody? Mm. You know? And so, um, but I have certainly, you know, done the guilt trip a lot of myself saying, oh, why did I do that? That didn't even taste that good. And why didn't I use better judgment or why, 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 you know? But the point is, it's past. Whatever event caused you to feel guilty it's over with you can't go back and fix it it's gone it's just away and what we have is today and this moment go forward make a better decision if you don't like the outcome of a decision you made change the outcome yes that's i love that i love that very good very good i wonder if uh and our green warriors that are watching and listening, if you've had experience with that guilt when you miss your target and, and how maybe if you want to put in the comments, if that, how that worked for you and, and, or maybe your experience, because these are wonderful things that Esther's talking about. And we're here, we are as, as a tribe here and we're lifting each other up and we're helping each other. And whether we're talking about things that we might have struggled with, that helps too. Because when you talk about something you struggle with, then other people will realize, okay, I, I'm not the only one and it's okay. It's okay mm -hmm. to have those struggles and you can still make it through. And I and I really appreciate everybody's comments that are coming in. And we're going to read through some of them in, in just a moment. And if you have a question for Esther, you can put that in the comments. We're going to be asking that as well. Okay, Esther, here we go. The next okay. one. Here we go. So penitence feeling bad because of something you did that you think was wrong works when we go off plan. Hmm. What do you say to that, Esther? Well, I think that kind of ties into the guilty thing. Uh, but what I wanted to kind of add on that is guilt and feeling guilty can be wonderful for people who are looking for an excuse to quit. Because you can feel guilty and think, oh, man, I've screwed up. I've messed up. I'm no good. I never can do this. I tried everything. It never works. And you can beat yourself up so much. And then what a wonderful excuse. You don't have to try again. You've already beat yourself up. But taking responsibility is the other pathway. And so, you know, you, can, you, you can't make up for what you've done badly. You can only make better choices in the future. And some religions, I think, teach guilt and keep people down and keep people under control. And I think we need to talk about that sometimes, too, that, you know, if you want to make a change, make a change. But feeling guilty about it isn't the answer. And, you know, if your guilt leads you to to uh, wanting to make a better choice, then that's one thing. But you don't have to feel guilty about it. Just say, you know what? 
I was in a certain place and I made a choice and you know what, I don't like the outcome. So I'm going to choose a different outcome and I'm going to just do something different next time and empower yourself to overcome the guilt. Very nice. I like that. Wow. So powerful, Esther. <laughs> You've got lots of books coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're coming out. You don't know it, but they're coming out. Because <laughs> this is this, these are the things that we need to hear about. Okay, Green Warriors, let's try this one. True or false? Toxic food can soothe our emotional hurts. True or false? Okay, Esther, go ahead. Only if we think they can. Only momentarily. Only for the moment, you know, because stress creates anxiety and we want release, right? And so if we can divert our attention to something else that tastes good or it's been a comfort food in the past, we can forget about it. But it's just a diversion. And, uh, and, and the thing is, when I feel, that's one thing I love about the potatoes that I eat is because sometimes I do have stressful days. And you know what? I can just eat as many potatoes as I want. I can just feast on them. There's no problem. There's no worry. So if I were to choose something else, it's not because I'm hungry. It's not because, you know, I, I don't want to deal with the emotion. But it's wonderful to know that there's a food I can go to on those moments when I just feel, you know, I'm, I need something else. And maybe it's true that what I need is more energy. And the potatoes bring our mind the calories and the energy we need to function. So, you know, don't worry about the what, when, and why. I mean, you do have to worry about the what. Don't worry about the why or the when or the how much. You know, those things you can fine tune later. But, you know, if you can break that addiction, I think breaking that addiction is more important than worrying about organic or inorganic. What good does it do? I mean, it's like saying to an alcoholic, well, if you eat, drink organic beer on the weekends, that's better than if you drink, you know, inorganic beer. And, you know, it's the addiction we've got to get over and have to break. And anything you can do. And so if you can eat potatoes anytime you want, you know, you've got an out. So if you're if you're emotionally hurt, you feel like somebody's messed you over something, just go eat a bunch of potatoes. <laughs> and if that doesn't fix it, it's because you really want what you're addicted to. Yeah. Very good. That's that's it. That's it in a nutshell, really. That's and that's what we have to to think about because there's just so there's so many dimensions to all this too, you know, and it's just not one easy answer. And we're all struggling. And I've seen different comments from the, the Green Warriors that are typing in that they, you know, have things that they're trying to soothe. And yeah, you're right. It's it's something that we all have to really think about and learn from this. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay, I have another one. Okay, Green Warriors, get ready for this one. True or false, the need to please others is stronger than the desire to heal ourselves. Mm. Okay, type in your answers. Esther, what do you say about that? It is for most of us. I mean, there are some of us who are obnoxious and there are some of us who are assertive and aggressive. And there are some of us that need love so badly that we will violate ourselves to please somebody else. And when that happens, when you're a pleaser, you know, you will not succeed on this diet because there's too many uh, opportunities out there in your circle of friends where, well, you know, it won't take much for them to say, well, here, one little bite won't hurt you or say, well, come on over for dinner. And then there's nothing there for you to eat. And there's just, you know, you have to get to the point where your life is at stake. It's serious business. And as such, you need to surround yourself with other people who understand why put yourself in the lion's den every day if you don't have to be there. And uh, even in your own home, you know, you just, you can have a, a, a mate say, uh, well, here, do you want to taste this? And I, I've had this happen here where Ben has made soups with more salt in it than I wanted. And he'll say, well, do you want to taste this? And I say, no, because then I have to take a picture of it and report to my people in my group that this is what I ate and it's not worth the trouble. So there, there have been a couple of times, though, where, where I put it in my mouth and then I went to the sink and spit it out. 
So I didn't put it into my body permanently, you know, but even that's a risky thing because of the, of the accelerated hit that it can provide. But basically uh, some people are just obnoxious and they don't worry about pleasing anybody. And so this diet should be easy for them. <laughs> but for those of us who want to be appreciated and want to be the good guy and want to be the nice guy, you know, and, and you give in, then finally you can get to the point where you're, like I say, nothing is nothing is worth giving up how good this feels and you can learn to be tactful in fact you can use whatever plant-based doctor you follow and you can say and even dr doug lyle says this you can say to people oh you know i'm just on a, a very unusual prescriptive diet right now and so i hope you'll understand you know so there are tactful ways to deal with it you don't have to say oh no i don't eat that shoot anymore I said, shoot, <laughs> you know, so there's ways to do it. Or you can say, you know, when you're invited to someone's home, you can say, uh, can I bring something? And you certainly can eat before you go to somebody's home and make sure you're really full and keep food with you in the car and, and know, and know that fasting is a wonderful tool. You know, people, we could fast for a meal. We could fast for a day and not float away. Mm -hmm. Fasting has a lot of benefits to it. So, you know, you can use excuses as you want, but uh, just know that uh, until you is, think of yourself as being on a plane and the plane's in trouble and a little oxygen mask fall down and you've got a kid sitting next to you. What are you going to do? Put on the kid's mask first? No, you have to put on your own so you have something to give to somebody else. And that's with us, too. Until you clean up your own act, what can you tell anybody else to do? You know, and everybody's on their own path. Let people be where they are. You know, I often want to to save everybody and preach to everybody and say, oh, la da 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 You know what? It's not my place. All I can do is shed my light and be who I am. And if that attracts somebody, fine. And if it doesn't, this is their journey. Yeah. You know, I, had, I had a dear cousin of my mother's. I asked her one time, what do you think about abortion? And why I asked her that, it wasn't even on my plate. I asked her why I asked her that. I guess I was testing her Quakerism. <laughs> and she said, I never thought it was my place to tell someone else how to live their life. Hmm. Very good. I love that. So I try to use that whenever I get judgmental. It's not yeah. my place. Yes. And it's so hard because when you first adopt this lifestyle and, and you see it working for you and, and you see and you see so many other people suffering, it's really hard not not to go and try to preach it to everyone but i like to think about how when when people around you especially people that know you and see that you have adopted this lifestyle especially in the beginning and even even over time too and if they haven't i think they're watching you yeah they're watching to see that you can't do it you know and not you necessarily know. that they want you not to do it but they're just watching to see that you can't do it yeah, that's right. And some people do want to sabotage. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, it uh, it can happen in families. I know one thing I finally, this was a, a, a wonderful pearl of wisdom. I'll pass this along. I, I have two older brothers and they both have health issues. Of course, they're 90 and 88, so that's wonderful. But nevertheless, one of them, I could tell that he was tense in my presence. And so I actually had to ask him, would you rather I didn't discuss this? And he said, yes. So I then, the next step is, and this is a biggie, I learned that my love for him is not conditional upon his ability to follow me. Mm. If we love someone, we love them right where they are. Like Mr. Rogers used to say, mm. I, I want you to be my friend. You know, it's not conditional. Like if you follow me or if you do this or if you jump through this hope, then I'll love you. No. Love is unconditional, and we want to move towards that. So even this week, I said to Ben, I said, my love for you is not dependent upon us thinking alike. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, if we, so, both, if we uh, both thought alike, but one of us wouldn't be necessary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and not thinking alike sometimes brings a lot of great things to the, to the table for people to expand them, their their feelings and judgments about things or the way that they're looking at things. And that's what 
Yeah. yeah. That's so true. That is so true. Yeah. And, and, and so when people are out there and they're watching you, I mean, that, that's where you really need to flex your muscles when, when people are maybe are trying to tempt you or maybe you're, you're just being tempted because you're out with them and they're watching you to see, you know, is this, is this lifestyle really easy? Because if they see you cheat or whatever, however you want to say it, slip, then they're going to think to themselves, aha, see, that can't be done. Yeah. Yeah. And recently we uh, were invited out uh, for a day to spend with a, a cup, two couples and it was a lovely day and they wanted to go and eat at this restaurant. And they had told us that that was going to happen. And we, we were with them all day long. And like you said, we really didn't even have to eat anything. So, but we came prepared and we decided that our latest thing that we like to do is if we go to a restaurant, we'll order, you know, if they have like a salad, we'll order a nice expensive salad. And oftentimes we'll tell them not to put on those extras that they're, that they're charging you for. So what, by the time you get that salad, it's really not, it's not worth what, what they're charging because you're not getting all the other things on it. And then we'll have like a little uh, container and it'll have, we, we make uh, vegan plant-based sushi. Oh, and then we just put it on top of the bed of of greens or whatever the salad is. And then uh, my husband Rick, he makes he loves to make food and things, and so he made a really wonderful uh, kind of sauce for dipping. And so we we had it in this uh, plastic uh, mustard container that you would get in the store, but it didn't have mustard in it. That wasn't what it was. And so we, of course, we offered people, did anybody want to try this? And they just loved it. Wow. So I think it, there's there's a lot of success that happens when, first of all, you show, you know, I can eat very well if I'm in a restaurant. I just come, come prepared and I can do it. And also I have delicious food. And if you taste it, you'll see that I'm not feeling deprived, that I'm actually enjoying this. Yeah. And my husband later remarked, of course, they all want the recipe and we offered to make some and drop it off at their homes. But afterwards, my husband Rick remarked, he said, you know, they had so many different dishes of food that they were being served because there were four other people. And he said, it didn't even tempt me. There was nothing there that I looked at that I said, oh, I wish that was what I was eating. He said, I enjoyed our food so much more. Yeah, we feel the same way. We go to a vegan lunch every Wednesday. Now there's sometimes 30 to 35 people that are coming there. And on Saturday night, we go to a Mexican restaurant where they have vegan uh, food for us. But even almost every time we come home and say, we like our food better. Yeah. You know, even if it's vegan, even if it's all those other things, you know, we just like our food. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get teased because I eat very plainly. And sometimes Ben will say, I like my food to taste good. And I say, my food does taste good to me, you know. And so it's all a matter of uh, degree of uh, enticement, I guess, or, uh, you know, whatever you put on it. But, yeah, I, I'm very happy. I mean, give me a sweet potato and some broccoli or, you know, I just, well, anybody that follows me knows how I eat. Yeah. I mean, the sweet potato is just, it's just. Oh. We're just so fortunate that we don't have to eliminate that like a lot yeah. of other people on other diets that, oh, no, you can't have that and, um, because that's just it's it just saves you. It really does. If you if it, you can bake a potato and put um, it in the refrigerator and then stick it in a Ziploc bag and eat it like it's an apple wherever you go, um, you don't have to worry about refrigerating it because it'll just, you know, be fine you um, know for the rest of the day. And so there's just never a reason that you can't have you can't have a bite of a big potato. I know. It's, it's good cold, too. Yes, it yeah. is. It really yeah. is. And and it may not be that way for somebody that's first adopting the no. lifestyle. Yeah. But th these are things that you can ask so many people that have adopted this lifestyle, how tasty these foods are, that maybe in the beginning they weren't as tasty, plain. But now, you know, that we, we have neuroadapted, we can yeah. definitely yeah. taste these wonderful flavors in food. And we're so fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. So I have, I think I have one more uh, true or false. Are you ready, Green Warriors? Here we go. Okay. True or false, minor slip ups matter. 
Type in your guess or your comment. Esther, what do you have to say? Oh, definitely. But they're not the end of the world. So they matter to the extent that you give them power. For instance, if you slip up and eat something and say, well, that wasn't the best choice. And your next bite's a potato and you go on. It wasn't that big of a deal. And there's no reason to shame yourself over it. But on the other hand, for some of us, there can be trigger foods where one slip might make us feel like, oh, we've already screwed up. We've already ruined the day. I might as well just go ahead and enjoy this whole day eating what I shouldn't eat. So the, the matter, the length or the, the way it matters is what you put on it, is the value you put on it. So if you make it like you feel like a failure, it's going to be a big matter. And if you say, oh, well, that was one bite, but I don't have to take a second one, you can make it a very small matter. Very wise. I love that. Well, we have some comments and questions, so I'm going to go through some of them. So Stephanie, greening Stephanie, she wants to know, what advice can Esther give for someone close to goal weight? Last few pounds to go that would help keep the weight loss going. Well, I had a doctor tell me one day a week, eat half of what you normally eat. Mm. So sometimes you can cut back and then who's to determine what your goal weight is. You know, sometimes we pick a number out of the sky because that number sounds skinny or it sounds like what you want to be, but it could be that you're already at your goal weight. Mm -hmm. And, and as long as you stay on the program, your body's going to adjust. Now, as I, and the other thing I learned is that we may not ever be able to add back into our diet the foods that we had to give up in order to get to the goal. For instance, like nuts, seeds, avocados, soy products, and those kinds of things, avocado, those things are healthy but high fat foods. So if you are eating a clean diet and you're still not getting to your goal, I'd say keep eating your clean diet and stay where you are. You might wanna in increase your, your exercise if that's going to help you, but don't make the number your goal. You know, be thankful for the progress you've made for the way your clothes fit. And you can go by that and not, not give so much power to the scale. And, uh, but to lose the last, you know, you could even fast one day if you wanted to do that, but you don't have to. And so, um, when I, when I, when I just, well, see, I thought my goal was going to be 200. Right. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. yeah. And so then when I got to 200 and I thought, wow, I made it. And then I went down to 190 and then 70 and then 160. And when I was at 160, my doctor told me I'm there. My BMI was where it should be. And I thought, wow, 160, you know. And then it went down to 150 and then 140. And I thought, oh, I want to weigh 143. That's the same as, um, as uh, what's his name, Rogers, Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers. Huh. And, and then... You know, and then I thought, and then pretty soon it was down to 139. I thought, wow, that's what I weighed when I was 19 and got married, you know. And I thought that was going to be my goal. And then it went down to 127. And I thought, I thought, well, that's good because that's 130 pounds off, you know. So I weighed less than what I had lost, you know, not that the numbers are that important. But, you know, I didn't know what my goal was going to be. But now I feel very comfortable. And, and for these four years, I've been able to keep it you know, maybe in a pound or two, one way or the other, but, you know, try not to make the scale your God because it's just a machine and mm -hmm. how you interpret it is up to you. You, because when I was dieting in the old days, if the scale went down, that gave me room to cheat. Yeah. And if the scale went up, that gave me room to punish myself. So it was never my friend because I was never where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So it was either accusing me or encouraging me the wrong way. So be careful how much power you give to the scale. Yeah. I can say that, well, I adopted this lifestyle over a decade ago, and I I had goal weights, and I, I, I can relate to you. I didn't have as much weight loss as you did, but I still had weight loss, and I'm a petite lady, so a pound on me is like five or ten pounds on somebody else. But um, when I did get to my what I thought was my goal weight, I was satisfied, and um, – and then maybe a year later, I dropped a little more weight and I didn't, I, I couldn't figure out what I was doing differently. And I think that you, and, and so on. And then I got to what I tell people was my fantasy weight. 
And, and even now, you know, I might see, cause I think it was maybe two years ago where I just dropped a couple of more pounds, which on me, like I said, is a lot. And, and I was surprised. And I think that over time you start to learn about how to feel satisfied with your food and eat, like they say, till comfortably full. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because oftentimes we, I don't think anybody should starve themselves and weigh and measure, but oftentimes, you know, we might even have a food that is very delicious and it might be compliant, but it might be delicious. Mm-hmm. And you might wind up eating more of it just because you're still getting a dopamine hit. Yeah. Even, even from this kind of food, you can still get a dopamine hit. Yeah. Another thing that I would wanted to pass on is that if you're the one that's preparing the food, a lot of times we taste while we're eating, mm-hmm. while we're preparing the food and we're not even eating yet. Right. So if you're you're taking a bite here and a bite there, you could have added 25, 50 calories without even thinking about it, especially if you're using date paste or nut butters or things. Just a little lick of one of those things can add on a tremendous amount of calories. So that that might be something I don't know if this would help Stephanie, but that might be something that you could consider. Yeah, Yeah, I think what I'd say to you, Stephanie, is. If, if I don't know how you prepare a meal for yourself, but I prepare a plate. And then, of course, I have to eat it all because I've taken a picture of it and posted it in my journey that that's what I ate. But given that, sometimes what you can do is eat half of that plate and wait 20 minutes and see how you feel. And if you're still hungry, eat the other half. If you're not, save it for a couple hours later. So we don't have to eat it all at once. And I would say also masticate your food and take time to chew and take time, you know, set down your fork and take time to really think about where this food came from and that's going to nourish your bodies and, uh, and, and just don't gobble your food because you can eat so fast that you've eaten too much. So try cutting it in half. And, if, and another technique would be, you know, if you're eating 70% starch and 30% uh, lean green vegetables. Well, you might kind of adjust that a little bit, eat a little less starch and a little more of the green and yellow vegetables to get a balance that you're comfortable with and still satisfied. But don't cut out your starch so much that you violate what you want to do. Oh, that's very good. Those are those are awesome. Oh, You're and another awesome. thing you can do is is drink two glasses of water before you, or even at least one glass of water before your meal. You know, and that's what's going to cut down. And another tip is uh, if you're eating too much or if you're eating later at night than you want to, right after dinner, go brush your teeth. Mm. And then and then say the kitchen's closed, you know, and you're not going to eat anything more. So th- there's lots of little tips out there for managing that. But uh, I would say, you know, be happy with yourself. If you're just a few pounds away from your goal, glory, hallelujah, you know, you have a lot to celebrate. Mm-hmm. And don't be don't be hard on yourself because if no. you sometimes you could just be doing everything perfectly, even though we were talking about perfection, and it's you're still going to maintain the weight, or you might even gain a couple of pounds. Mm-hmm. And and but the trajectory, if you keep going, it's going to be maybe up a little bit, down a little bit, but it's going to be down, 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 and maybe a couple spikes up, but down, 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 and yeah. it could be next year suddenly you lose a couple more pounds or whatever those pounds that you're talking about. And you say, mm-hmm. well, I, I thought that I was done. I guess I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and salt content plays havoc with our scale as well. Mm, yeah. Not, no, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't eat salt, but I'm saying to the extent that my food has salt in it, I do notice a difference. Mm-hmm. Yes. Especially, especially in a restaurant, you can't guarantee it's going to be salt free in most cases. No, no, absolutely not. You're right about that. I wanted to, to I'm going to be giving Esther an opportunity soon to talk about what she does and how we can find out about her. But I, I wanted to talk about this book again, and I bring it up every time that we have a broadcast. So this is Esther's book from Donuts to Potatoes. And it's a wonderful book. And, and it's if you want inspiration 365 days a year, you can just go ahead and you can either look at it. It's like a, it's in a calendar form where each each page has a date on it. But you could just take, you know, flip it through and just say, ha, here's something that I wanted to, to read. And, and, and they're all going to be wonderful things. And I, the reason one of the reasons why I'm bringing that up is because Esther has 
so generously offered to give away a copy of her book to somebody who's going to be lucky enough to, to win that copy of the book. And I'm going to give you a link in the show notes and also in the comments to, to show you what you can do in order to get a copy of that book. And, and if you don't get a copy, if you haven't, and you have, haven't read it, I encourage you to get it anyway, because it, <laughs> it is go. it is a wonderful, wonderful book. Esther, do you have the copy of the book in front of you to maybe read a passage? Cause I love to do that whenever you're here. Um, it's fun. Yeah, I do have it here. And I just did a little video for my group on Facebook and I read it. So I'll just read it. It kind of seems appropriate for today, for April 28th. And the word is payoff. There is usually a payoff for everything we do. We work, save money to buy a house, travel, raise a family, and get an education. But somehow, when it comes to health, maintaining the status quo is enough. Enough is fine too. Let's just get honest with ourselves. If only taking the minimum medication will get us through, maybe that is good enough. Sometimes there is social pressure to look a certain way. So we think we need to conform for the sake of acceptance, or as we talked about, pleasing others, when in fact, the way we are just may be good enough. Who wants to struggle by going on a diet? Who wants to give up the abundant array of foods now available in the world? What incentive is there if enough is okay? When the payoff for maintaining the current status of affairs is exceeded by a health crisis, we generally choose to do something about it. At that point, it becomes real and the payoff in continuing our way of life becomes declining health. Maybe we don't care. Maybe we tell ourselves it is to be expected in old age. Maybe we accept the pain, the depression, the weight, being immobile. But again, maybe we don't. Oh, that's beautiful. And and all these passages are just they're just so encouraging. And like I said, you could either look it up on the on the day of that it is today, or you could just flip through and just see what the universe wants to give yeah. you. But I always find them, these things that you write about so very encouraging, and you do share that on your Facebook page. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. You may, guys, you may have noticed, because I'm the engineer of this show, so I click on a lot of things, and I'm not always very good at it. But you may have noticed a spinning wheel that popped up a couple of times. And the spinning wheel is going to pop up now intentionally because our previous guest who was on and she had talked about this book that she wrote, which is called The Plant Powered Dog. And if you didn't get that episode, you should go back and watch it. And that was uh, Diane Lavager Dunetz, and she is a canine nutritionist. And she gave a copy of this for us to give away. And we did have the giveaway for this one is over, but not, but Esther's has just begun. So you might've missed out on this one, but you can enter for, and I give you the link in the comments and in the show notes, but I promised that we were going to do the drawing. So I'm going to do the drawing for this and we're doing it with a spinning wheel. And I've never done this before and we're live. So I'm just going to give myself grace because Esther is so nice and she gives, gives grace to everyone. So I'm going to try and give myself grace. So here here it is. This is the spinning wheel now. And I hope you can see it. And there's a bunch of people's names that they entered. And we're going to pick someone right now. So uh, here we go. I'm going to go and we're going to pick someone to see who won this copy of the book. So here we go. Good luck to all of you guys. And here it goes. It's spinning around and around. And, and Maya Acosta is the winner of the book. Maya has a show called Healthy Lifestyle Solutions, and she's a big fan of mine, and I'm a big fan of hers. Congratulations, Maya. And the author of this book is going to be sending it to you your way. And next time when we have our next show... We are going to be able to 
go ahead and do a drawing for Esther's book in the same way. So, and you get more than one opportunity to win and you'll look in the details of that to see, I think there's up to five ways you can win, meaning that you could have your name in the, on the spinning wheel up to five times, which would increase your chances <laughs> because we like, we like to make this very, a lot of fun. So congratulations to Maya. And we're going to look forward to next week so that we can do a similar drawing for Esther's book. I'm so excited. I love, I love these things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now I wanted to give um, Esther a chance to talk about what you do and how we can find you. Oh, okay. Well, I think of a word like I did uh, on that day. And I, I just think about it and then I expand on it and create a word every day. And I've been doing this for five years. And I put that on my Facebook group as a source of inspiration to all of you. And, um, and then I do a video every day where I read from my book. And then I take pictures of everything I eat to show you how simple it can be. And all of this is done on my Facebook group, which is called Esther's Nutritional Journey. There are two questions that I ask that you answer prior to me approving you for the group. Uh, I want you to say what your goals in life are because uh, unless we know what we want, we're not going to get there. And then I also ask, have you seen some of the documentaries? Because if you haven't, then that's a place where you can see ones that I think are helpful to watch. And I think I also include some of the videos that I've made. So that's basically my group on Facebook and it's grown and is growing. And I just love responding to you every day and um, supporting you. And sometimes you might disagree with me and that's okay too, because you have a voice. <laughs> oh, I love that, Esther. That's very wonderful. Thank you for that. Okay. And now I wanted to talk about that I wanted, well, let's see, I wanted to thank everybody for, for being here. Green Warriors, what do you think was a pearl of wisdom that you gleaned from today or something that just kind of made you think maybe that you wanted to do things a little bit differently? So type that in the comments about what your takeaway is. And I wanted to also thank Just Test Voice. She did the countdown and she did the promos and she does so many things for me that, that really helped get the, the word out for this broadcast. And it's just so important to me that she does this and it means so much to me. Just Test Voice, who is coming up next? In spite of our good intentions to eat healthier, several common roadblocks can sometimes keep us stuck. Tune in to learn a few tips on how to move forward with Sid Nodder on Wednesday, May 3rd, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific on Be Green with Amy Live. And if you might have noticed, Sid Nodder is an author also, and she's going to be doing a book giveaway as well. So we've got lots of fun things happening <laughs> and lots of support. I just can't get enough of any of these books that have to do with this lifestyle and because they're always so there's always something to learn. Right. <laughs> and I, yeah, I wanted to also thank you, Green Warriors, for watching and listening and sharing and liking and subscribing, because like Esther, I've gotten so many wonderful things happening to me and my loved ones who have adopted this lifestyle. And I just want to tell the world about it. But we can't. <laughs> Because we have to just be <laughs> only if they ask us. <laughs> so, but you can help by sharing this broadcast like these with other people. And to thank you, I wanted to offer you five free recipes. So if you go to my website, begreenwithamy.com, and you just slash join, you can get five free recipes and I'll, I'll email them to your inbox. And after that, I won't bother you again, but you will get those from me. And I also wanted to give, you know, we, we, a lot of times we talk about love and loving yourself. And this is especially to Esther today. Ta everybody, take your right hand and grab your left shoulder and take your left hand and grab your right shoulder. Now squeeze, because that's a hug from me to you. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> and if you want to join me and Esther, because she's going to help me with my tagline, you can type it in the comments below so we can kind of all say it together. Are you ready, Esther? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, until I see all of you again, remember, be strong, be well, and be green. green. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Esther. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Bye-bye. Now you can listen to Be Green with Amy expert interviews wherever you go. Listen while walking, meal prepping, or traveling. Find Be Green with Amy on Apple, Google, Alexa, Amazon, or virtually anywhere you find podcasts. Be strong, be well, and be green with Be Green with 